Here we have the CRT3 or CRT Mark III router table from Trend. Now, why would you use a router table as opposed to just using it in a router, the cutter in a router to do the work? Well, sometimes once we start getting into the realms of big panel cutters, or if we're, if we're doing a lot of repetitive stuff, uh, obviously it's safer, cleaner, better dust extraction to put it over on a table. So, what are the features and benefits and what makes the CRT uh, useful to us. Well, first of all, it's a small skeleton frame, powder coated. It's got a, a, an MFC MDF top, so it's nice and light. Metal plate in the middle, which is where we bolt the router to. And basically, as long as it's a trend or like default configuration router, you would have to double check the, the, the bolt holes, although you can re drill this to suit. But basically, it lends itself to any router can go into this table, so it's not trend specific as it were for your router. So if you notice the router is inverted, it's bolted through, which means the cutters here etc. One of the key safety features on a router table is have something underneath here which we call a no voltage release switch. What that means is you could be working away, you could get a power cut. If you get a power cut, the last thing you want is a big cutter like this for example, being in a router table, and all of a sudden it's just to switch on. So what it the no voltage release switch as soon as the power goes down, uh, the switch then resets itself to zero. So when the power goes back on, you have to turn the unit back on. So there's no chance of the machine spinning up on its own. So that's primary importance. The other thing is, is obviously when we're setting up the machine, we need to make sure that we can open or reduce the size of the mouth to get uh, the fence as close to the cutter as possible. So obviously these are all movable and all lockable on the back edge here by just locking them tight. We have uh, in the MDF tabletop here, we've got aluminium extrusions to run a parallel fence or an angled fence. So here we have an angled fence here, which simply slots in so we can set to an angle. And it enables us to be able to put our own sacrificial block on it. So when we're going across the table, any of us using the routers will know and if you come across and the cutter then cuts into this to stop any splintering out. So there's your fence. Also big turn buttons at the back here which means that the back fence can slide in and out according to how we want to set it up depending on what kind of work we're doing. There's gauge markings at each end so we know that it's absolutely parallel or in this case we're using it with a bearing guided cutter which means that we can set it up and just dye it in so we know that we're absolutely parallel, it's close to the cutter, and we just lock them down. The other thing you notice on the back here, we've got very, very, very good dust extraction. Big dust extraction port, and the efficiency of it is incredible. It just takes everything away. Now, at certain times, we might not want a parallel fence, but what we might want is a pin guide. Again, there's a machine slot in the top here just to screw it into, which means then you can bring your workpiece in and run it against the pin and then onto the cutter. Okay, certain applications, if we're doing curved work, that's what we need. So, there we have the CRT3. The other thing is when we're running material through the fence, we have these sprung-loaded feathers which means that we can have it set on the base and these slide in and out so we can get close to the cutter for the workpiece. And what these do is these keep pressure on the timber, keeps it against the fence, and as you're pushing it through, if the cutter tries to bite, it stops it pushing it backwards. So we have it on the base and we have it also on the rear fence here, underneath here, as you can see. So this will slide along over the top of the cutter. We can set that and then we have a plastic guard which we can drop down which is clear so we can still see the cutter and you can still see the workpiece that just stops any possible chips etc or fingers getting in the way of the cutter. Now in the top here as well obviously on the throat of the machine where the router comes through there's a big hole here and you get various sizes included of plastic discs to reduce the size of the aperture. So you can take it out completely if you're using a huge panel cutter. But equally, 
If we're going down to a smaller profile cutter, we can just reduce the size down by clipping them in significantly so we don't have a gaping great hole for our timber that's passing over to catch or any fingers or anything to get in the way of. So, as I said, it's compatible with a lot of routers out there, but you would have to check. But if you want to really make it come into its own, then the Trend T11 is where you want to go because the Trend T11 has the facility to have fine height adjustment from the top. So instead of getting underneath and undoing stuff, all you've got to literally do, twist and turn, but to raise and to lower to give the fine height adjustment on the cutter itself to your workpiece.